Hello and welcome. Today we have a slightly different video uh, about RenP and story writing in RenP and in particular story branching programming in RenP. I assume that all of you have the same issue that when you are writing branching stories it's starting to get a bit tricky because no matter what tool you use you never have the complete overview. Uh, I tend to write in advance in some tools like uh, Y Writer or Scrivener. Uh, there's a lot of them. Some of them even allow branching storylines, but it's always pretty difficult to translate it into code. And latest, when you commit the code to RenP, you start having the problem that you don't know where you are anymore and navigation starts getting very difficult. Obviously, uh, RenP comes with Atom, which is the editor that allows you to jump from file to file which is a very nice thing, but if you need any deeper navigation than that, you're basically lost. We're talking about stories that jump from label to label. So I figured, uh, of course, let me say first, I am on Windows. I assume that on Apple it would work in the same way, but I guess you might have to make some changes. Well, I wrote myself a small tool, and the tool does nothing else but to parse my RenP programming files, so the RPI script files, and collects all the labels and jumps and prepares them in order to be able to do a flowchart. Uh, and since there is a really fantastic tool, uh, a free tool called um, YED that you can use to make really nice flowcharts, I decided to not reinvent the wheel and to just simply create a file that you could import. Um, I will post this code, um, I think, in the Lemma Soft forums would be best, where usually the discussion is going on, so that you can have a look at it and you can maybe develop the code also further uh, and give some feedback if it's, if it's of any help. And uh, let me now show you how this works. Uh, first of all, I need to create inside the game directory of your game uh, another folder that you can give basically any name. I called it V Navigator, which is the name of my tool, but you could just as well use, let's say, timestamps if you want to have um, different versions from different times during the development. And inside this folder, you only need one single file. It's a Python file. And this Python file is going to parse all the script files from the game directory. So one directory up from here. And it's going to create some new files based on it, and it will all be done in this temporary directory, in this temporary folder, so it doesn't mess up anything in your game directory. So let's run this and see what happens. I'm going to double click now on this uh, vNavigator PI script, and what it does is it creates a whole bunch of files. Let's ignore the batch files for the moment. The most important one is this graph ML file. This is basically a flowchart description that can be loaded with YED. YED is a fantastic tool uh, for making flowcharts. It's free and uh, I really recommend it also when you're generally drawing anything. It's really really handy and you see already it loaded now something and in the beginning everything is on top of each other. I have not bothered putting any um, coordinates to the boxes because anyway YED is so incredibly good that I will use, um, sorry, the layout, the hierarchical layout here. So we have a hierarchical story. It's a branching story. So I just simply tell uh, YED to please open up these boxes, put them in a row. Um, top to bottom is usually the best one. You don't need to do anything else. You just click OK. Et voila. And suddenly we have my whole script opened up and a bit of background. I have hidden the end of the story. You only see the first let's see, 60%. So you see that the beginning of the story is actually just a single sequence. It's a kinetic, nothing is moving. And then it starts suddenly opening up. So what is the advantage of having this kind of a tool? Well, first of all, whatever you do in the code, when you rerun this tool, you will get a new flowchart that is up to date. So you always see what is going on. Uh, you don't need to do anything by hand. This is all automatically created. And it has a few nice features. Let me show them to you. 
The first thing is we have in every box, which is a label, so every label becomes a box, we have first the name of the label. After that, we have the name of the file, and I've removed for easier legibility the dot um, RPI script uh, suffix, so this is the file name. And then in case there is any comment behind the line, it will also include that comment on its own row. So we have one box which pretty clearly tells us where we are and what we're doing. Any jump is shown as an arrow. And if you have several jumps, then you will also have several arrows. The other nice thing about this is that if a jump has a comment, well, this jump comment will also be shown here. And now the best part, which I like the most, is YED can actually create links to boxes and uh, or to actually any element. And if I click here, let's say on this point of the story, I can now jump to that part in the editor. So I just right click and I select go to URL. I can, of course, also press F8. So in other words, I can jump to the story from any point in this chart. So quick check how it really works. I select one box. You see here that the URL pops up. So I selected the one box. I can press F8 or use the right click menu to jump to the correct place in the code. And indeed you see here on the right that we have jumped to exactly this label. I can also take another label. Let's take a label in a different file. Let's take this one here. I press F8 and Atom is going to jump to the correct file and is going to jump to the correct label as well. So this is quite handy for navigating. Another thing that I just quickly added as code is that if there are labels that don't exist, but we are jumping to, then they will be put in red with an exclamation mark. Now, clearly, in, in uh, RenP script files, you're not going to have that. But I needed to put this as a safety measure because um, the editor YED is not going to open these files if labels are missing. So if I have a jump or an arrow, uh, um, an edge that goes to a box, that goes to a node, it needs to be existing. And uh, during the time when I am writing something, the code might not be consistent. So I might be missing some boxes. These here I'm missing actually because I have a hidden part of the story because I don't want to spoil it too much. So this is why they are highlighted in red. And that's quite handy. And the reason why I had these uh, unfortunate batch files, well, the reason being that unfortunately YED, it can jump to files, but however, it unfortunately cannot. Let me open this up for you. So you see the file here, this is the URL, but unfortunately it cannot start an editor with parameters. So I needed to cheat and basically for every label, I created its own batch file, which then will jump to the right place in the Atom editor. Not sure if this is of any use. Obviously the code itself is written in Python. So most of you will probably have Python already installed anyway. So, and this is the code, it's actually quite short. If you want to have a quick look, you can just open it in the development environment of Python and have a look. So I'm really not doing anything special here. I'm just parsing through the files, trying to understand the logic and then outputting the graphML file with the XML code that is needed. So if this is of any use, feel free to use it. I will post the file most likely on the Lemasoft forums where a lot of the discussion about RenP is going on. And uh, yeah, feel free to, to make changes. And maybe if you're an Apple user, you might even make some small changes to the directories so that this also works with Apple. I don't know if it's of use to anybody, but I honestly have to say that this helps me a lot while writing. And uh, yeah, maybe it's useful for somebody else as well. Thanks a lot, happy developing, and uh, see you next time.